Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers uh, for inviting me to this uh, interesting meeting. And uh, so today, uh, I would like mainly uh, review the large reduction and the 2B matrix model. And if we have time, I would like to explain what I'm thinking now. So, so large reduction is a typical example of emergence of space-time from matrices. The basic statement is the large N gauge theory with periodic boundary condition does not depend on the volume of the space-time. In particular, the theory in the infinite space-time is equivalent to that on one point. So in this sense, the space-time emerges from the initial, uh, from the internal degrees of freedom of the reduced model. So this is a lattice version. So we consider UN or SUN lattice gauge theory. This is ordinary Wilson action. And in a d-dimensional periodic box of size L1 cross L2 cross Ld. And the statement is in the large n limit, n going to infinity with lambda fixed, physics does not depend on the size of the box Li. If the center invariance un mu going to some phase multiplied by un mu is not broken spontaneously. By the way, we are Euclidean here. Time is. This is Euclidean space time. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, and uh, large reduction itself holds uh, Euclidean and uh, Minkowski, but uh, the, this model is Euclidean. Yes. yes. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. So, here physics means uh, first of uh, free energy per unit volume, and secondary, Wilson loop. And the Wilson loop in a periodic box is defined as the next two slides. So first of all, a closed loop C in the infinite lattice space is specified by a starting point N, N, and the sequence of directions alpha, beta, and so on and so forth. Therefore, we can define the corresponding loop C prime that is folded in the periodic box by the same expression once the starting point n prime is specified, n prime, n prime plus alpha hat, and so on and so forth. Then the Wilson loop in the periodic box is defined as usual. So we have uh, seen what physics means here, and uh, in particular, if we consider the minimum size of the box, 1 cross 1 cross 1, we have a model with d unitary matrices. Here, everything is periodic, so matrix here and here are the same. So we have, a, for example, for 1, 2 plane, we have u1, u2, and u1 dagger, and u2 dagger. And this is called the large and reduced model. And the continuum version of the large and reduced model can also be considered, and it is given like this. Here we have a n by n Hamishan matrix instead of un, and the action is just a commutator square, and we have some coupling, and we have some uh, uh, weight. And, uh, and the statement is this model is equivalent to the d-dimensional Yang mills if the eigenvalues of a mu are uniformly distributed like this. So as we see, this one is essentially equivalent to the center invariance. And, uh, and however, it is not automatically realized. It is known that the eigenvalues collapse to one point unless we do something. So how is the center invariance broken spontaneously? So to be concrete, we consider the continuum version. And in order to see in order to examine the center invariance, 
let's consider the one loop effective action for the diagonal elements of A mu obtained after integrating out the of diagonal elements. And the quadratic part of the action for fluctuation is uh, something like this. And here we introduce a uh, Feynman gauge. So we have ghost B, C, and here. And uh, we have uh, this action. So after integrating over A tilde and B and C, we have this one loop effective action. We have n squared and d minus 2 and uh, log of uh, distance between two eigenvalues. And the point is uh, this effective action is of order n square for n variables. So it, this means uh, this action should be minimized in the larger limit. So if d is greater than 2, this is positive. So the eigenvalues of A mu are attractive and collapse to a point. And this indicates that spontaneous breaking of the translational invariance of the eigenvalues because everything collapses to one point. And since uh, An and uh, Un are related by this, this is, is a continuum version of the center invariance, U mu going to some phase multiplied by U mu. So how can we recover the center invariance? And in order for space-time to emerge from matrices, the center invariance should be recovered. So actually, there are several ways to recover the center invariance. So one is a strong coupling. And if the coupling is sufficiently strong, quantum fluctuation might overwhelm the attractive force. And it actually happens at least for the lattice version of the reduced model. This is the lattice version of the reduced model. And it's known if lambda is greater than some critical value, then center invariance is, or a center invariance is recovered. And second one is called quenching. And we constrain the diagonal elements of A mu to a uniform distribution by hand. Then the perturbation series reproduce that of the d-dimensional gauge theory. However, this is rather formal, and the gauge invariance is no longer manifest. And actually, a lattice version of quenching that keeps manifest gauge invariance was proposed by these people, but now it is known this doesn't work. So the third one is the twisting. And if we expand A mu around the non-commutative background like this, P mu uh, satisfies our canonical commutation relation. The theory is equivalent to gauge theory in a, in, in a, in a non-commutative spacetime. And I'll come back to uh, this point later. But uh, because the equation motion of the reduced model is given by this this one, the non-commutative background is a classical solution. But it is not the, the absolute minimum of the action. So one way to make it stable is to modify the model to this one. So if we subtract this part, then this one becomes 0 is the minimum. The last version of this is called the twisted reduced model. So this is original reduced model, and we put uh, this phase. And several Monte Carlo analyses have been made on the twisted reduced model, and they found some discrepancy from the infinite volume theory, which is related to the UVIR mixing. And uh, th these people uh, have introduced additional heavy adjoint fermions then the collapse of the, uh, the eigenvalues can be avoided without changing the long distance physics. And I think still uh, there are many uh, Monte Carlo simulations uh, going on about this statement. And now I want to introduce a proof of the large reduction. And there are several proofs, each of which shows an aspect of the large reduction. 
So why is the loop equation? And the loop equations are nothing but Schrodinger Dyson equations obtained from the variation of a link, uh, of a link variable on a Wilson loop. For example, if we consider a non-self-intersecting loop, and if we consider the variation about this link, and then we get this kind of equation. So from the action, we have these two terms, and uh, we have nothing else. However, for the corresponding folded loop in a periodic box, we have additional terms like this. Oh, I think I should have plus, oh, I, th I don't know what, somehow the pictures are broken. And, uh, okay, so, so I'm really sorry. Th these alpha are not there, and I don't know why this happened. And what I want, so, so please ignore these alphas. And what I wanted to write is this one, oh, very strange, uh, so sorry. And this one plus this term is equal to zero. So here each of C1 and C2 is closed in the periodic box, but not in the, the infinite space. So in the large limit, uh, traced operators are factorized in general. And we have uh, WC1, WC2 is factorized like this. The crucial point is that C1 contains different numbers of UN mu and UN mu dagger, at least for one direction mu, because it is not closed in the infinite space. Therefore, if the center invariance is not broken spontaneously, WC1 or WC2 is zero. And the ad additional terms disappear. And I apologize, or, or we have something strange here. So anyway, the point is the equation is this one plus this one is zero, but each one is zero if center invariance is not broken. So the next one is a strong coupling expansion. The statement is the strong coupling expansion series of the Wilson action and the reduced model agree in the large ending. The essence is captured by the, the Weingarten model that is obtained from the Wilson action by replacing the unitary measure with the Gaussian measure. So this is a Weingarten model. So instead of uh, considering unitary measure, we consider Ga Gaussian measure. And here V and mu are n by n complex matrices. And the Wilson loop for Weingarten model is simply defined by replacing <coughs> un mu with v n mu. So the definition is almost the same. Then the Feynman diagrams for a Wilson loop look like this. Okay, here we consider uh, this Wilson loop, and uh, this one is one, uh, one, two, one, two. Okay? And then uh, this diagram uh, means a uh, uh, fifth order perturbation for lambda. So what we are doing is uh, keep this uh, Gaussian measure on the exponential and we expand this. And so uh, and, uh, we are expanding one over lambda. So this is uh, one over lambda fifth because we have five brackets. So each face corresponds to the V to fourth interaction and each side corresponds to the propagator. So the crucial point is that we do not need the precise information of the site if the graph is plane. Okay, suppose the vertex A corresponds to the site N. Now for any vertex B, find a path P from A to B. The site corresponding to B is obtained by summing up the displacement vectors along P. So the side corresponding to here is n plus 3 plus 1 plus 2. And the point is this does not depend on the choice of p. And the situation is analogous to the existence of a potential for a rotation-free vector field. So this means that Weingarten model and the reduced Weingarten model give the same values of Wilson rule. And a similar analysis can be applied to the Wilson action by using the standard source formula. So we just uh, 
change a unitary measure to some, some weight, and uh, you are replaced to J, del del J mu. And then using this formula, we can do a similar analysis. So in this way, we can show that the strong coupling expansion series of the Wilson action and the reduced model agree in the large end limit. And, and next uh, proof of the large end reduction is perturbative expansion around diagonal background. And as the simplest example, we start with the large end phi cube theory in the continuous space. Here, phi is n by n Hamishan matrix. And we consider the expect expectation values of single trace operator, such as trace phi x1, phi x2, and so on. And here, I introduce Parisi's reduced model. And it is constructed as follows. First, let p mu be n by n diagonal matrices whose elements distribute Uniform, uniformly in the d-dimensional space, and which we regard as a momentum space. So p mu are simultaneously diagonalized. And corresponding to the field phi x, we introduce a n by n Hermitian matrix phi tilde, and construct the corresponding action and operators by substituting this expression phi tilde to x. And phi tilde is defined like this. Phi tilde and exponential ipx and exponential minus ipx. And if we substitute this expression to phi to the original expression, uh, we get a reduced model action and reduced model operator. And for the action, space-time integral of 1 should be replaced with this one. And this part is a uh, 2 pi over lambda to d is uh, nothing but volume of the unit cell. And lambda is a cutoff that appears in p mu here. here. Then uh, we have the following. So del mu phi is replaced to del mu phi tilde. This is this. And this one becomes a commutator of i p mu and phi and sandwiched by these two. And then this action is replaced to this one. So this part is replaced to this, and this part is about this. The point is uh, this expression has no x dependent. So we have uh, uh, integration of 1. So we replace this with this number. So this is a reduced action. And we have this action. And uh, for operators, we have the, the same expression. And the statement is, in the large n limit, the expectation value of this operator agrees with the original field theory. So the proof is very simple. And for simplicity, we consider the free energy. And the generalization to the expect expectation values of the operators are straightforward. So from the quadratic part, we have this propagator. And Feynman diagrams for the free energy are something like this. Here we have a two-loop diagram. And we have this expression. And in the large end limit, we can replace summation over i with uh, integration over p. So this one becomes this. And uh, here the point is uh, just two momenta are independent. So we have, uh, we define this k1 and th this one as k2, and then this one becomes k1 plus k2. So we have some uh, momentum integral that gives lambda to d, and the result becomes like this. So this is exactly free energy per unit cell. So we apply our uh, Paris's rule to the continuum gauge theory. So we replace our uh, a mu with this expression. Here we have introduced the matrices A mu tilde. And then uh, after some manipulation, we can show that uh, field strength should be replaced to this one, P plus A mu and P plus A mu. And uh, we sandwich it with these two factors. 
then the action uh, becomes uh, the like this. The point is, uh, if we define uh, this combination as a mu, then the action becomes like this. And p mu disappear from the theory. So one might conclude that this theory is equivalent to the gauge theory in d dimensions, but it is too naive. Actually, in the proof of Paris's rule, we have assumed that the diagonal elements are negligible because we have only n such variables, while the action is of order n square. But it is not necessarily true in the massless theory. In the massless theory, the propagators for diagonal elements become infinite. For example, the propagator here is pi minus pj square plus m square. But if mass square is zero, if we consider diagonal element where i and j are the same, this one zero plus zero, so we have infinite. So we have to be careful when we apply Paris's rule to a massless theory, such as gauge theory. So this is why we have to worry about the center invariance. <laughs> then uh, we can also try to prove the large reduction from expansion around the non-commutative background. As I said for the twisted reduced model, if we expand a mu in the matrix model action around a non-commutative background, like this, S becomes the action of gauge theory in a non-commutative space. I said this, but uh, I didn't prove. So the proof can be shown in the next two slides. So first, we introduce a mapping between operators and functions. Here we consider some function OX, and we just write in a Fourier transform. And then we replace X mu with operator X mu. Here X mu is a linear combination of P mu, and C is the uh, inverse of B mu nu. B mu nu is a uh, coefficient here. So this is essentially a while ordering. And uh, so in this way, uh, we can make some correspondence between function and operator. Then we have the following correspondence. So the commutator between p mu hat and O, p mu hat is uh, the original background here. And this corresponds to derivative of O. And the product corresponds to star product. And the identity, a trace of O hat, is equal to integration over the phase space. So the crucial point is that the commutator mu a nu is mapped to the field strength in the non-commutative space time. Because the commutator is p plus a, p plus a, and we have this, this four. And this one is a background b mu nu, and this one is del mu a nu, del mu a nu plus this. So this is nothing but b mu nu plus f mu nu star. Then the matrix model action becomes a field theory on the non-commutative space time. So naively, if UBIR mixing is not there, this theory is equivalent to the large N gauge theory in the low energy region. But it is not true, and the matrix model is not completely equivalent to the ordinary field theory. And here I would like to point out that UBIR mixing and SSB of the center invariance are related. Actually, the twisted reduced model this one is equivalent to the original reduced model in the strong coupling region. Because the phases cancel out in the strong coupling expansion. So this suggests that the absence of EVIR mixing in the strong coupling region. So now I discuss the relation between the large end reduction and string theory. And uh, large and reduced model looks like wall sheet string theory. And actually, this idea uh, comes from Nambu 77. And the basic idea is a uh, wall sheet of a string has a structure of phase space. And this situation becomes manifest 
when we express the stream in terms of the shield action. And in fact, in the shield action, the word sheet can be regarded as a symplectic manifold, and the action is given by the integration of a quantity that is expressed in terms of the Poisson bracket. And for simplicity, we start with bosonic string. So bosonic string is described by the Nambugoto action. And it is nothing but the area of the wall sheet, which is expressed in terms of an anti-symmetric tensor sigma mu nu that is constructed from the space-time coordinate x mu. And it is known that the Nam goto action is equivalent to the Schilt action. The Schilt action is defined like this. Here, square root g is a volume density on the wall sheet. And uh, x and y is defined like, like this. And this is nothing but the Poisson bracket if we regard the wall sheet as a phase space. And the equivalence can be seen easily by eliminating square root g from the Schilt action. Actually, we have a uh, square root g upstairs here. And since uh, this contains uh, square root g downstairs, so this one in total contains square root g upstairs. So if we uh, eliminate square root g, we have a, a geometrical mean of the, these two. So we have this action. And this one is nothing but the Nambugoto action. So the crucial point is that the shield action has a structure of phase space. In fact, it is given by the integration over the phase space of a quantity that is expressed in terms of the Poisson bracket. So note that we do not need world sheet metric, but what we need is just a volume density square root g. So then we want to discretize the world sheet in order to define the path integral. And the natural disc discretization of phase space is the quantization. So if we quantize a phase space, it becomes a state vector space, and we have the following correspondence. Function becomes matrix, Poisson bracket becomes commutator, and the integration of a space becomes trace, and double infinity symmetry becomes UN symmetry. Then the shield action becomes like this. And the path integral is regularized like this. So this is the original path integral. And uh, we have uh, this one becomes like this. Here we have used the fact that the phase space volume is diffeomorphism invariant and becomes a matrix size. So this part becomes uh, the, the <coughs> sum over n. So therefore, the path integral uh, over g becomes summation over n. Mm. Oh, this one. Oh, sorry. This one. Is, uh, okay. Okay. The, the, okay. So, the, the <laughs> yes. 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 Maybe it's better to write volume. Yeah. 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 So th this means. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. This one becomes this. Sorry. So one good point of the matrix regularization is that all topologies of the world sheet are automatically included in the matrix integral. Also, disconnected wall sheets are included as block diagonal configurations like this. Here, if we have block diagonal matrices, this part corresponds to Sophia, for example, and this part corresponds to Torah, for example, and so on. And furthermore, the sum over the size of the matrix is automatically included if the wall sheet is embedded in a, large, in a larger matrix as a submatrix. So if we take this picture, that all the wall sheets emerge as submatrices of a large, large matrix, the second term of this action can be regarded as describing the chemical potential for the block size. Thus, we expect that the whole universe is described by a large matrix that obeys just this action. 
And but this is nothing but the large and reduced model. And we have seen that in this model, the eigenvalues collapse to one point, and it cannot describe an extended spacetime. This might be related to the instability of bosonic string by Takio. On the other hand, if we start from the 2B superstring, we will get the reduced model for supersymmetric gauge theory. And in this case, eigenvalues do not collapse, and we can have non-trivial spacetime. By the way, up to mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. the dimension of spacetime D was not mm -hmm. special. Nothing oh. was in D equal to yes. 86 yes. or... Yes. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so, okay, so the point, of, okay, for, okay, so number auto action, actually, um, if D is 26, um, it's easy to keep uh, modular invariance. But uh, actually, non critical string or uh, in higher than one dimension is not well known. And uh, so, but, uh, if you formally construct a matrix model like this, it seems uh, you can define the system uh, for any dimension. But uh, this part is uh, completely non-trivial, and uh, actually I don't know a good answer. But uh, to any rate, uh, for bosonic case, uh, the theory is, uh, cannot describe a con uh, extended space-time. And on the other hand, uh, if we consider supersymmetry, then uh, the eigenvalue can distribute, and we can get uh, a good theory. And for this to happen, uh, we need some special dimension. Actually, uh, as we will see, uh, we need 10 dimension. So this is a 2B matrix model. So the definition of the 2B matrix model is the following. So first, we construct the shield action of type 2B superstring. And this is a green Schwartz action uh, in the form of Nambu Goto action. So here we have x mu and theta 1, theta 2. They are 10 dimensional Majorana y. And the action is rather complicated. But the point is uh, this one has kappa symmetry and n equal to Suzy. And, uh, and we can fix the gauge. Uh, of the kappa symmetry to theta 1 equal to theta 2, which we call psi. And then the action becomes very simple. So this is number go to action plus x and psi and psi. And so still we have n equal to supersymmetry, which is written like this. Then uh, we can convert the action to the shield action, as in the case of bosonic string. So we have uh, this part and this part. This is the same as bosonic string. And we have this additional part. And the n equal to suji can be written like this. And the point is, everything is written in terms of Poisson bracket. So again, we can apply the matrix regularization, and we have this expression. And then n equal to suji can be written in terms of commutator. So everything is written in terms of content. <coughs> so dropping the second term as before, and consider large M limit, we have this action. This is called 2B matrix model. And uh, actually, I, I understand uh, Antal Javitsky and uh, Tamiya Kiyonea had, had obtained uh, this model independently. So formally, this is a large and reduced model of 10-dimensional super and mirror theory. The good point is that the n equal to Suzy is manifest even after the discretization. By the way, mm -hmm. the matrices psi, psi, mm -hmm. psi yes. are they now Grassmannian values? Oh, yes, Grassmannian values and 10-dimensional Marana wire. Yes. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Grassmann, yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, I should have mentioned. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So n equal to Suzy uh, can be written like this. So the first one is uh, 
nothing but uh, 10 dimensional superparameters or reduced to zero dimension. And the other one is almost trivial, just a shift of psi. Even so, they form non trivial n equal to supersymmetry. Here, maybe I should, yeah, yeah, I think this is. Here, this is not, not a Poisson bracket, but anti commutator. So I would like to make comments on the other matrix models. So 2B matrix model is nothing but the, the dimensional redu reduction of the 10-dimensional super theory to zero dimension. So it is natural to think about the other possibilities. And in fact, they have considered the dimensional reduction to various dimensions. So if we consider one dimension, this is a famous uh, Dewitt, Hoppe, and Nicolai theory, or later Banks, Wischler, Shenkan, Saskan, rediscover uh, their model. And I think Danger is going to talk about this this afternoon. And the uh, two-dimensional one is a matrix string. And uh, if we reduce to four dimension, we have the ordinary ADS CFT. And from the viewpoint of the large N reduction, they are equivalent if we quench the diagonal elements of the matrix. So starting from 2B matrix model, if we quench diagonal elements of H0, we have one-dimensional matrix theory. And again, if we quench a diagonal element of A1, we have two-dimensional matrix string. And then if we quench uh, A2 and A3, we have ADS-CFT. However, the dynamics of the diagonal elements are very complicated. And at present, we don't know the relation exactly. So there are some open questions about 2B matrix model. So we expect that the 2B matrix model gives a constructive definition of superstring. However, there are some fundamental open questions. Is an infrared cutoff necessary? Or how should the large n limit be taken? How does the space-time emerge? How, do, how does the diffeomorphism invariance appear? So I would like to discuss this problem. <coughs> so first of all, uh, in general, systems with gravity do not allow a simple weak rotation because the kinetic term of the conformal mode or the size of the universe has the wrong sign. On the other hand, the path integral of the 2B matrix model seems well defined for the Euclidean signature because the bosonic part of the action is positive definite. How about the low Lorentzian signature? So if we simply apply the, the analytic continuation, A0 is minus i A to 10, the path integral becomes unbounded because we have uh, A0 and AI, we have minus here. So the simple weak rotation doesn't work. But from the point of view of the large N reduction, it is natural to put I here, because uh, our original theory in Lorentzian signature is exponential I of the action. And after large N reduction, we, are, we still have I here. So, so, so we believe oh, this one is the right uh, way to define the theory. So the next question is, is infrared cutoff necessary? So because of the supersymmetry, the force between two eigenvalues cancel between bosons and fermions. So, so this is a point. And so, so the point is, so if d is 10, um, and, uh, and if we consider 10-dimensional uh, super mills reduced to 0, then we have 8 to minus 8, and this one is 0. So it seems that we have to impose an infrared cutoff by hand to prevent the eigenvalues from running away to infinity. But there is a subtlety. And because the diagonal elements of fermions are zero modes of the quadratic part of the action, we should keep them when we consider the effective Lagrangian. 
So, so for the bosonic case, we have kept just all these variables. But for superstring, we also have to keep all these variables. And the one loop effect Lagrangian for the diagonal elements is given by some expression like this. And because of the fermionic degrees of freedom, there appears a weak attractive force between the eigenvalues, and at least the partition function becomes finite. However, it is not clear whether all the correlation functions are finite or not. So, uh, and we can estimate uh, the order of this uh, fermionic interaction. And uh, I think I skip this part. And uh, the result is uh, the interaction coming from fermionic zero mode is order n. And this should be compared to the bosonic case, where we have order n square. So supersymmetry reduces the attractive force by at least a factor 1 over n. So in the na naive Lagrangian limit, simultaneously diagonal backgrounds are stable. However, it is not clear what happens in the double scaling limit. So the next question is how to take the large n limit. And in the 2B matrix model, we usually regard A as the space-time coordinate. So if we put G square like this as a coupling constant, G has dimensions of length squared. And how is, is the, the question is how is the Planck scale expressed? And it, if it does not depend on the infrared cut of L, as we normally guess, and we are not completely sure if this is true or not, but if we assume this, and the Planck scale does not depend on IR cutoff, then we should have this kind of expression from power counting, from uh, dimensional analysis. L Planck should be equal to n to some power and g to one half. And in other words, we should take the large n limit, keeping this combination finite. And unfortunately, at present, we have no definite answer. By the way, as mm. we are in 10 dimension, mm. the, the string, there is a string length and the Planck mm. length. Yes. Where is the string length here? Okay, okay. string length and Planck length are related by string coupling, right? Yes. So, so, yeah, yeah. Is G is not a string coupling here. Right, right. G is, G is some coupling of, of this matrix. Yes. So, so, from, the, so, G string should, okay, so people believe that the G string should be fixed. By, by some mechanism. So after G string is fixed to some number, then Planck scale is proportional to string scale. So th th this is what I mean. Okay. Thank you very much. So, so I would like to discuss the interpretation of the matrices. So if we regard the 2B matrix model, as a matrix regularization of the shield action, a mu a space-time coordinate. On the other hand, if we regard it as a large and reduced model, <coughs> the diagonal elements of a mu represent momentum. So another interesting possibility is to consider a non-commutative background, such as like this. And here, p mu satisfies the canonical commutation relation and 1k is k by k unit matrix. Then we have a four-dimensional, for example, if we take four of them, we have four-dimensional non-commutative flat space with SUK gauge symmetry. So there are many possibilities to realize the space-time. So actually, various models that are close to the standard model can be constructed by choosing an appropriate background. So these people, uh, uh, including uh, Harold, and uh, the nice work uh, along this direction. By the way, mm -hmm. the, the fermions mm -hmm. are never given a background value. They That's are. right. Yes, yes, yes. But but uh, still, uh, we need uh, fer we have to keep fermionic zero mode. To uh, yes, and and after integrating fermionic zero mode, we have uh, very non-trivial interactions. 
between eigen, eigenvalues. Mm. So this is why we have such a rich uh, space time from matrix model. So and uh, these people uh, did a numerical simulation for the 2B matrix model with Lorentz image. <coughs> and by identifying the eigenvalue of A0 with time, they found that the eigenvalue of only three AIs become large, which can be regarded as an expanding three plus one dimensional universe. I think the chair san is going to talk about this. So, you, so recently, another interesting picture of the expanding universe has been obtained by considering fuzzy manifold. Again, uh, Harold did some good work. And uh, I think you are going to talk about it. So I would like to uh, discuss diffeomorphism, invariance, and gravity. So diffeomorphism invariance, uh, uh, because we have uh, exact n equal to supersymmetry, it is natural to expect to have graviton in the spectrum of particles. Actually, there are some evidences. First one is a uh, gravitational interaction appears from one loop integral. And also the imagined gravity by Steinach. So gravity is induced on the non-commutative background. However, it would be nicer if we can understand how the diffeomorphism invariance is realized in the matrix model. So I would like to introduce an attempt, although it is not complete. So the basic question is, uh, in the large and reduced model, a background of simultaneously diagonalizable matrices correspond to the flat space. And if the eigenvalues are uniformly distributed. In other words, the background A mu zero is I derivative mu represents the flat space. Okay, they are the same. So how about curved space? So is it possible to consider some background, like a mu is equal to i covariant derivative of mu? So this is a question. So actually, there is a way to express the covariant derivatives on any d-dimensional manifold by d matrices. More precisely, we consider d-dimensional manifold m and a regular representation field on m phi a. And here the index alpha, sorry, phi alpha. Here the index alpha stands for the components of the regular representation of the Lorentz group, SOD minus 1, 1. Okay, okay. So regular representation is uh, 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 actually uh, so, the, okay, sorry. Okay, so maybe. Uh, Okay, this is a, I think, standard technical word. And actually, over here, we consider a set of functions defined on group. Okay, so if you are given a group, you can construct a set of functions on this group. And then group acts on this space in a well-defined way, right? So this is a regular representation. So the, the, this is not a, a reducible representation. It's a, a terrible or reducible representation. Actually, uh, in the case of uh, uh, SO3, for example, so regular representation is a direct sum of uh, spin 0 and 3 of spin 1 and 5 of spin 2 and seven of spin three, and so on and so forth. So it's a big representation. And so the definition is a function space on group manifold. And then group can act, right? Yeah. I think, uh, for example, you know, to construct a, a representation of a finite group, for example, uh, then the because uh, we know uh, regular representation contains uh, uh, 
number of re reducible representation and the number of copy is a dimension of this representation. So we can classify. Uh, so I think there are many ways to use regular representation. And here, the reason I consider the regular representation is the following. Okay, so regular representation is an infinite dimensional regularization. So we have infinitely many alphas. So actually for this case, as a, so, so we have uh, infinitely many irreducible representations. So what is the signature of mm. M? Hmm? What is the signature of M? Oh, any, any manifold, any manifold. Without a Lorentzian signature. Oh, oh so signature, signature is Lorentzian here. Okay, so for, for Euclidean you can do the same thing, but here we consider uh, Lorentzian, okay, to be concrete. And uh, to, to do this, uh, it, it is not so important. So we, we consider, so if we like a Euclidean signature, it, it's still okay. Okay, so, so the crucial point is that for any representation alpha, its tensor product with a regular representation is decomposed into the direct sum of the regular representation. So VR is any representation, and if we consider regular representation, this one, is decomposed to copies of regular representation. So in particular, the krebs gordon coefficients for the decomposition of the tensor product of the vector and the regular representation uh, are written like this. Here, uh, B and beta are the dual of the vector and the regular representation indices on the left hand side, B and beta, B represent this, B, beta represent this. And A with parentheses indicate the A's component, A space of the regular representation on the right hand side, and alpha is its index. So the krebs gordon coefficient for this decomposition can be written like this. Then for each a, each alpha, uh, each a, a from one to d, this combination, okay, this is the covariant derivative and with this krebs gordon coefficient, is a regular representation field on n. So in other words, if we define covariant derivative with parentheses a by this expression, so we just mix by krebs gordon coefficient, each of nabla a is an endomorphism on the space of the re regular representation field on M. So in this way, we have seen that any covariant derivative on any d-dimensional manifold can be expressed by d matrices. So therefore, any d-dimensional ma manifold M with d less than or equal to 10 can be realized in the space of the 2B matrix model like this. The fair here, uh, this symbol is a covariant derivative on M multiplied by the krebs gordon coefficient. So there are some good points and bad points. And the first good point is Einstein equation is obtained at the classical level. And in fact, if we import the ansatz, A is equal to I of this nabla with parenthesis A, on the classical equation motion, we have this. And then after removing uh, krebs gordon coefficient, this one is equal to this, equivalent to this. But uh, the comitator now with, with ordinary in indices A and B are nothing but uh, Riemann curvature and uh, uh, generator of Lorentz, uh, Lorentz group. And then we have this one plus this one. So th this equation is equivalent to two equations. This one is zero, and this one is zero, and this RAB is zero. But the first equation follows from the second equation by Bianchi identity. So this is equivalent to rich flat condition. So any rich flat space with d less than or equal to 10 is a classical solution of the 2B matrix model. And good, the second good point is both the diffeomorphism and local Lorentz invariance are manifestly realized 
as a part of the SVN symmetry. In fact, the initial uh, infinitesimal uh, diffeomorphism and the local Lorentz transformation act on phi A as this, respectively. And both of them are unit unitary because they preserve the norm of phi A. But unfortunately, there are some bad points and uh, fluctuations around the classical solution contain infinitely many massless states and positivity is not guaranteed. And this can be seen by considering the fluctuation around the flat space, for example. And in this case, the background is equivalent to this one. So where I regular is a unit matrix on the space of the regular representation. And because the unit matrix is on the regular representation is infinite dimensional, we have infinite degeneracy, and in particular, we have infinitely many massless states. This is bad point number one. And also, in general, the regular, regular representation contains infinite tower of higher spins, and we have many negative norm states. So it is not clear whether we have sufficiently many symmetries to eliminate those negative norm states. This is bad point number two. So one possible way out is to consider a non-commutative version. So what we have done is to regard the matrices as endomorphism on the space of the regular representation field. And it is easy to show that this space is equivalent to the space of the functions on the frame bundle of the spin bundle. So if we can construct a non-commutative version of such bundle, we can reduce the degrees of freedom sufficiently without breaking the diffeomorphism and local Lorentz invariance. So this is an open question, but uh, I think uh, this part uh, suggests uh, that we are going to some good direction. So we can embed uh, any rich flat uh, space to, to be matrix model. So, so I, I think our uh, time runs out. <laughs> Is that okay? So, yeah, yeah maybe it, it takes uh, 10 minutes. And so I would like to discuss topology change of space time. So first I would like to discuss low energy effective action of quantum gravity or string theory. So we have seen that any d-dimensional manifold is contained in the space of d matrices. So, so we accept the interpretation of the regular representation. Mm -hmm. So therefore, 2B matrix model should contain the effect of the, the topology change of spacetime. And as was pointed out by Coleman some years ago, such effects give significant corrections to the low energy effective action. So it is interesting to consider the low energy effective action of the 2B matrix model. So actually we can show that if we integrate out the heavy state in the 2B matrix model, the remaining low energy effective action is not a local action, but has a special form, which we call the multi-local action. So this is a form of the low energy effective action. Here SI is uh, uh, given like this, so we have square root g and oi are local scalar operators, such as 1. If we take 1, this is the volume of space time. If we take r, this is the Einstein term, and r mu square, oi mu square, and so on and so forth. So si, si is a part of the conventional local actions. The, the point is uh, the effective Lagrangian is a function of si's. So it's uh, it's not local anymore, but it's not completely non-local. They are just functions of local actions. And this is essentially the consequence of the well-known fact that the effective action of a matrix model contains multi-trace operator. More precisely, we first decompose the matrices A 
into the background A0 and the fluctuation phi. And here we assume that the background A0 contains only the low energy mode and the phi contains the rest. So we also assume that this decomposition can be done in a SUN invariant manner. Then we integrate over phi to obtain the low energy effective action. So substituting the decomposition into the action of the 2B matrix model and dropping the linear term in phi, we obtain so the background part and the quadratic part for fluctuation. And in principle, the zeroth order term here can be evaluated with some ultraviolet regularization, which should give a local action. And the one loop contribution is obtained by the Gaussian integral of the quadratic part. Then the rest is, uh, then the result is given by a double trace operator like this. We have trace of AAA, trace of AAA, and with some numerical correction. And the crucial assumption here is that both of the diffeomorphism and the local Lorentz invariance are realized <coughs> as a part of the SUN symmetry. Then each trace should give a local action that is invariant under diffeomorphism invariance, that, under diffeomorphism, and the local Lorentz transformation. So each piece should give local action like this. So this one loop part becomes some constant and SI and SJ. And similar analysis can be applied for higher loops. And in the two loop order from the planar diagrams, we have a cubic form because we have three indices. We have cubic form of the local action, while non-planar diagram give a local action. So we have seen that the low energy effect theory of the 2B matrix model is given by the multi-local action. And this reminds us of the theory of baby universe by Coleman. And actually, in 1989, Coleman gave the argument like this. So let's consider a Euclidean path integral, which involves the summation over topologies. Then there should be a wormhole-like configuration in which a thin tube connects two points on the universe. Here, the two points may belong to either the same universe or different universes. And if we see such configuration from the side of the large universes, it looks like two small puncture, okay, puncture here and here, or puncture here and here. But the effect of a small puncture is equivalent to an insertion of a local operator. Therefore, a wormhole contributes to the path integral like this. The contribution from this uh, wormhole can be written like this expression. We have two punctures and some coefficients. And then summing over the number of wormhole, we have uh, this one to the nth and the symmetry factor one of n in factorial. And then this one is exponentiated. Thus, uh, we find wormholes contribute to the path integral like this. This is the original action, and uh, this is a contribution from wormhole. And if we consider bifurcated wormhole like this, we have cubic terms, and uh, so on and so forth. So, th so this is the Coleman's argument. So although there is no precise correspondence, the loop in the 2B matrix model resemble the wormhole. Here, if we consider two, one loop uh, in 2B matrix model, here we have two indices, x and y, and this resembles one hole like this. And probably this phenomena. This is y. Mm -hmm. Isn't this y, the second picture? This is x. This, oh, <laughs> thank you very much. This is x and y. Yes, two points in the world, world sheet, uh, on, on, so on the universe. Sorry, x and y. This is correct. Yeah, somehow, this is x and y. And, uh, and, uh, and this loop, uh, and this loop, okay, so, and th th this is a diagram for, for, for matrix. So we have two indices, x and y, and uh, from this we have one trace, and from this we have one trace. So action is x and action is y. Thank you. So probably this phenomenon occurs universally. 
we may say that if the theory involves gravity and topology change, its low energy effective action becomes a multilocal action. So the so multilocal action may provide a mechanism of automatic fine tunings and give a solution to the naturalist problem. This is what Coleman did. And this is what Coleman claimed uh, some time ago. And uh, we consider the action given by given like this. And the point is uh, S effective is a function of S i's. We can express uh, exponential i S effective by a Fourier transform like this. We have i where lambda i's are Fourier conjugate variables to S i's and w is a function of lambda i. So we just, uh, okay, we just uh, apply Fourier transform to this regarding S1, S2, and so on are uh, independent variables. Then the path integral for S effective can be written like this. So this is the original path integral, but this one is written like this. So after changing the order of integral, we have this expression. And the last integral is the ordinary path integral for the action like this. Here, because OI are local scalar operators, such as this, uh, summation of lambda i OI is an ordinary local action. And the lambda i are nothing but the coupling constant. So this part, if we see just this part, this is nothing but a local field theory. So therefore, the system we are considering is very close to the ordinary field theory, but we have to integrate over the coupling constant with weight w. And the point is, uh, if uh, this integral has a sharp peak at lambda equal lambda zero, for example, we can say that the coupling constant are fixed to lambda zero. So, so the, the Coleman's claim is uh, in this way, uh, all the coupling constant could be determined just by uh, calculating this partition function. Now, however, it is not clear how to define the value of path integral in the Lorentzian theory, because we do not know a priori the initial and the final state of the universe. So we can uh, do some guess for this uh, integral, but here, uh, instead, we can take a working hypothesis like this, so which we call uh, maximum entropy principle. So the coupling constants are tuned so that the entropy of the universe becomes maximum. So there are many arguments ar uh, along this direction, but uh, one argument is as follows. Suppose that we pick up a universe randomly from the multiverse. Then the most, proba most probable universe is expected to be the one that has the maximum entropy. So if the cosmological constant evolution, evolution is completely understood, we can calculate the total entropy of the universe. And in principle, all of the independent low energy couplings are determined by maximizing. For example, if we accept the inflation scenario in which universe pops out from nothing and then inflate, most of the entropy of the universe is generated at the stage of reheating just after the inflation stops. <coughs> Therefore, the potential of the inflaton should be tuned so that inflation occurs as much as possible. And furthermore, if we assume that Higgs field plays the role of inflaton, the above analysis tells that Higgs potential should become flat at some high energy scale. And actually, uh, from the recent experimental data, we see that the parameters of the standard model indeed seem to be <coughs> chosen such that Higgs potential becomes flat around the Planck scale. And we can obtain realistic cosmological model of Higgs inflation. So I just show the result. And uh, so this is the result of uh, uh, Renormalization group 
uh, analysis by plugging realistic value for the Higgs mass and the top quark mass. So if we tune the top quark mass, then we can find a flat potential. And uh, by introducing some non minimal coupling Z, and this part is not completely satisfactory, we have to introduce a Z with order 10. But in the original Bezrukov Shapushnikov theory, they had to introduce Z around 10,000 or 100,000. So maybe it's better. So, uh, so in this way, we can make a realistic uh, uh, Higgs inflation model. So, so this is a summary and conclusions. So it is natural to expect that space-time emerges from matrices. But as we have seen, there are various possibilities. And it is also important to understand the time evolution of the universe. And in particular, matrix models may describe the very beginning of the universe. And it is important to develop numerical techniques to solve space-time matrix model. And topology changes, change of universe is automatically included in matrix model, and it may give a clue to resolve the naturalness problem. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you for this impressively exhaustive uh, talk. Uh, are there uh, questions or comments? Yeah, but, uh, you consider just the type 2b matrix model mm -hmm. in a flat background. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you could have considered it in curved backgrounds. Okay, so, yeah, okay. So, so, so okay, there, I think there are some possibilities. Of one is to deform the model itself, right? I, 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 so, it's presumably an, inter yeah. I mean, an interplay between yeah. the, the last part. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, so my guess is uh, maybe any curved manifold is included in 2B matrix model, original 2B matrix model, without any modification. So, so this is what I, I, I uh, okay, I hope maybe. <laughs> so, so the, okay, so for one dimensional model, uh, people deform the action, right? I, I think you are going to ex ex explain a BMN matrix model and so on, right? Yeah, doing yeah. That, you could, this is doing it on a PP wave background. Yeah, you could yeah. equally have considered yeah. a PP wave yeah. background. Yeah. yeah. So, but uh, what I want to claim here is uh, maybe the original to be matrix model already contains all possible uh, topology or uh, all possible uh, uh, background. So the so the okay so. So the point is, so, so okay. So by considering a uh, regular representation field, uh, we can construct this kind of background. This is for sure. So this means uh, any manifold. Okay, any manifold means we, uh, with a uh, metric. Okay, any mani any with, topology uh -huh. with torsion too. This is a connection. Can uh, you allow? Okay, so just a moment. With torsion, with torsion. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, I think I think torsion is allowed. Okay. Yes, yeah, yeah, thank you. Very good point. Yes, yeah, thank you. Maybe for the benefit of the coffee break, we should go for other questions mm -hmm. uh, during mm -hmm. the coffee break. Mm -hmm. Thank you again. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>